IDW saw in a comic issue 20. Normally, if I saw a roboticized shadow, I'd be wondering why it doesn't use chaos control to beat Sonic immediately. So, the believability of the story is going to depend on whether Shadow can still use chaos control as a robin or not. It'd be ideal if you were specifically told that he couldn't. Though going off IDW's logic so far, if he refused to use it before, it'd be just in character for him to refuse to use it now. And maybe the Zombots' overall intelligence downgrade means it's unable to think to use it. I call them Robians instead, despite them not following Eggman's orders anymore, because at least Robian sounds like a concept that belongs in the Sonic series, because it's used so much. So it's easier to put up with this ridiculously out-of-place concept if I call it something it reminds me of that's better. I mean, at least in SA2, it was the first time Shadow ever met Sonic, and so it made sense that he didn't take the heroes seriously enough to just kill them with Chaos Control. Sure it's lucky for Sonic that he isn't transforming and all the time he's being held by Shadow. I don't know how long that kind of thing takes, but I guess the rules are that he has to be completely covered in it first, or else he'd never transform. And yet Sonic thought that merely touching someone's hand would infect them when his glove would doom them to be a zombie, Sonic kicks Shadow in the chest and, I guess, makes him fall over to the floor. Though it looks more like Shadow intentionally went down and let him go. As if he actually had free will. But apparently he didn't let him go on purpose. Why would he let Sonic go? His programming makes him only want to infect him. Wouldn't a robot have a tighter grip than that? When did he cause Shadow any pain and make him let go of him? Wouldn't it be hard to cause a robot enough pain to make him let go of you? Already we're off to a confusing start because the writer wrote himself into a corner having him get held by Shadow without Omega right there to shoot at Shadow. He wrote himself into a corner because Rouge couldn't exactly save him because she'd physically attack Shadow and get transformed. Even then, I don't know why Omega shooting him would make a robot let go of someone either. Do the Robians still feel pain? And I can't understand for the life of me why Sonic's bothering to attack Shadow when he knows that the Robian's infect by touch, even if he's able to run it off. He's not about refusing to run away, and yet all of his attacks have been fine afterwards. Knowing that he's infectious just makes our fight scene too cringe-worthy to be worth looking at, and the fact that Shadow looks terrible doesn't help. The whole story I've been wondering if Rouge will be roboticized next. At least we've already seen all of the main Sonic characters get truly roboticized in Worlds Collide. So the writer has leeway to have them not be following Eggman's orders this time, because at least that way he's doing something new. Still feels like a missed opportunity though, because Worlds Collide was not nearly as long as this arc is going to be. And every time Sonic faced a roboticized friend of his, he got him de roboticized in the same issue anyways. Sonic reminds the audience that he's here to protect a truckload of uninfected people. He's told that everyone was just put in the truck, and he says he'll cover Rouge. She gets in, and the truck drives into the Robians, and Shadow tries to run after it. So, does Shadow still have a super speed in this form? I mean, why would he lose it? Chaos Energy is magical, why would it just go away because he was turned into metal? After Omega shows up, Sonic finally notices that Shadow's been running after the survivors. And I guess we're supposed to assume that when Sonic first started asking where Shadow went, the Robians were further away from him than they are on this panel because otherwise they would have grabbed him in all this time. Still, they should have been drawn as further away from him regardless. He runs after Shadow and says that Shadow's not so fast when he doesn't know how to work his rocket skates. So at least that was explained. Oh, but then he says he's still faster than the average Robian. So he still has his magic, and can only use magic that can be used effortlessly when trying to do normal things. Apparently his rocket skates were either ruined when they were covered in the metal virus, or too hard to use when he's only thinking about infecting. Sonic gets thrown and is told that he should leave because he's getting worse, and he says that the truck isn't far enough away and he's not leaving another friend behind when he goes on a treatment run. Why is he worried about leaving someone immune to the metal virus behind? Well, apparently he can get severely damaged by the Robians. It's not like his metal is so tough that they can't actually damage him. Which is what I was used to thinking, because Omega barely ever gets damaged in the franchise. Omega tells him they aren't friends, and I'm still confused at Sonic's idiotic refusal to run. Even if he just doesn't want to leave him to get damaged, he's a robot, so he can be repaired regardless. 
He should tell Omega that the reason he can't destroy the Robians is that they just regenerate. Rather than leaving it at, you can't destroy the Zombots, which just makes it sound at first like he's just telling them he shouldn't do it because it's wrong. Which is probably all he heard. And obviously he's not gonna care, because he's an evil robot. He says he's just wasting ammo, and advised them to get out of here with him while he's still got the energy to run. Omega says no to retreating in mercy, and smacks Shadow into the ground, because he's a Robian too. And it seems like Shadow's basically defeating Omega here. Omega's portrayed as too dumb to live, as he apparently gets defeated from refusing to retreat. Again, I can't imagine anyone would be as stupid as these characters. Sonic ends up getting rescued by Silver and Tails, who show up out of nowhere, with no indication beforehand that they were coming here. And Sonic takes off just in time, as I really have to wonder why he was stupid enough to wait so long. Surprisingly, it turns out that Omega can still talk as just the top of his head, and Tails gets to pick him up and save him after all. Silver has to dodge Shadow's attack, all because he inexplicably wasn't flying high up enough. They decide to leave, and we see Sonic okay at Restoration HQ. Cream greets Sonic and is nice to him, though she still brings the mood down by showing him a ton of scared refugees in the building. She says she's been bringing them snacks and sweets, and been trying to be happy so they can be happy too, and he calls her the bravest hero ever. It'd be pretty sick of the writer to have her roboticize after that panel, because she's clearly a likable character that there's no reason to hate right now. So it would be really twisted of him to want to get rid of her anyways, just because she's technically unnecessary. Again, by that logic, almost all of the Sonic characters would be expendable, because barely any of them are necessary. But thinking as nihilistically as that about them would be pretty evil. She tells Sonic that Amy's office is right through here. It's certainly refreshing to have Amy have an office when she's just a teenager. Why is she insisting on calling her best friend Miss Rose instead of Amy? Won't Amy have told her enough of the formalities? Sonic thanks her and says that Tails fixed Gemmerl up. He was damaged? Gemmerl refuses to let Sonic visit Amy because he's infected, but Cream says he has to humor Amy. At least respect how Gemmerl's kinda smart. And Sonic sees Amy, who's giving orders on a headset, saying that they've got a call for evacuation and need a supply drop. It's been smart of the characters to shorten the word evacuation to evac. Rouge says that the idiot should have run off when she told him to. Then why did Flynn write that? I don't know why Flynn is so fine with writing respectable, competent action heroes to be idiots if he knows he's doing it. I'm pretty sure a guy who effortlessly thought to manipulate Eggman SE2 was supposed to be intelligent. But whatever. He's Modern Shadow. Modern Shadow might as well be a different person. It honestly makes me wish sometimes that he was established to be just a robot. Cause the personality difference would be explained. Amy's glad Sonic's okay, and she admits that she's not sure how long she can keep this up. I can't help but wonder if it's foreshadowing or having a nervous breakdown. That'd be pretty dark, but at least it makes sense. She's reminding me of Sally with how she's getting stressed out by the constant pressure and bad things happening. So to be fair, Sally would be just as miserable in this position. So this by itself isn't proving that Amy isn't qualified for the job. She's doing just as well as Sally at this point. She tells a group to keep a low profile and tells another pair of groups that one of the groups went down on Turtle Shell Island and needs immediate support. Why is she calling her group's names with the word Echo instead of saying Group 1, Group 2, and whatever? What's the point of wasting the time with an extra syllable when the word Echo seems meaningless here? And why isn't Sonic color blue, and why is Amy's hair too dark? I'm pretty sure the lighting in the room would be better than this. Why wouldn't it be? It's distracting. I say this because it's, it's depressing enough as it is. Espio tells Sonic that they're back to finding survivors and supplies. Sonic asks him if bringing Charmy back to them is a good idea, and Vector defensively says that it's as good an idea as him being in here. That is a good point. Sonic says it's been a while since he slept because he can only afford little naps or the infection might spread. I guess what we're supposed to assume is that some of it hides within his fur no matter how fast he runs. But that's still pretty confusing. You'd think over 600 mile per hour winds would send anything out of someone's fur. Sonic can only go so long without sleep. And you'd think if Vector and Espio were making this point, they would have said that it'd be better for Sonic to be tied up when he takes a nap. 
Because you never know when his nap might actually last too long and he won't wake up in time. He'd have to be supervised whenever he takes a nap. Why would he take a nap on supervised? Sonic says that Tails wanted to meet up with him about a plan. If it's not about giving Sonic a caffeine pill and he hasn't even started on a cure yet, I'll never take him seriously again. He thanks Silver, who wastes our time when they're just going over stuff about his future that he clearly already said all of before. So why are they bothering? Sonic asks Tails if he can rebuild Omega, and Tails says that he could build something comparable and install his head into it. Oh, so he's gonna waste his time on that instead of entirely focusing on making a cure for the metal virus. Wonderful. What a fucking idiot. He doesn't need Omega's help. He's just one guy against invincible robots. Who's so stupid that he'd just get himself destroyed immediately because he doesn't know when to retreat. Repairing him while the metal virus is still around is just pointless. He doesn't even need to make something that could turn the robots organic. If that takes too long. All he has to do is return their minds to normal to make them not want to infect anymore. And he can worry about the rest later. He says, once I have the time and supplies, of course. Okay, so Tails had better mean that he's not planning on rebuilding Omega until after he's made his cure. Tails says that he isn't any closer to figuring out the metal virus. To be fair, I guess it's only been a day, or even just a few hours. How am I supposed to know how exactly long it should take to figure out a nanobot army? Still, how in the hell is the analysis he took of Sonic not enough? Maybe it's because the metal virus on him would still be the old variety that follows Eggman's orders and that's obsolete. But even then, it's still got enough in common with the new variety. It's just one extra line of coding in it. They should be able to reprogram the metal virus regardless. Most of the metal virus nanobots would be exactly the same. So logically, all you'd have to do to study the metal virus is study the metal virus that was on Sonic under a microscope. Which he'd try to do even if he didn't know it was a nanobot, because he'd want to see which elements of the periodic table it's made out of. Any sample would be enough to study. What he should have said is that he hasn't had enough time. He says that he thinks he has a solution. This better be good. He says that because Sonic's speed is beating the metal virus, he's working on a sensor that'll read Sonic's biometrics when he runs. And hopefully it'll give them more insight into the metal virus and how it's reacting to his system. Now where's this nanobot army that'll reprogram the metal virus? All they'd have to do is stab into the metal virus nanobots and inject them with the new code. Tails expects me to believe that the computers here can't handle that kind of data. Huh? Why? Because convoluted writing and padding. You'd expect that if anything, the amount of code or data in a nanobot would be smaller than that. Why would a mere nanobot have so much data that the computers can't handle it? Like computers that are tiny enough that they can be in liquid and hold coding that people can't see have too much data for his computer to handle. He says he's got a lab in Central City that can handle it if Eggman doesn't attack there. Silver says he'll protect him in case he needs it. Silver's been so nice and likable in this comic. It'd be pretty heartless of the writer to get rid of him too. Because he hasn't done anything wrong. It is unbelievably stupid that they would even consider for a second that Silver shouldn't protect Tails when he's trying to get a cure. Then if you're called away to help somewhere else, oh yeah, I'm sure that other city is so much more important than making sure you get a cure. My god, how can they possibly be this stupid? Why would Silver need to protect that city if Tails gets a cure? Tails could just immediately cure them anyways. Tails says that if Sonic gets him the data, he'll process it to find a cure and coordinate everything from here. I don't know why he needs the data from- I mean, you can barely see any metal bars on Sonic. I mean, you can barely see any metal bars on Sonic. Why does Tails think that he'll have enough to analyze on him? Why would he need more? A so-called liquid made of nanobots is just made of the same little thing over and over again. You could learn just as much from it by researching one little part as you could from researching a huge part. Even if the writer is completely clueless and isn't thinking of it as nanobots, you could learn just as much from researching a tiny part of a magical liquid as you could from looking at a huge part. Either way, it would require looking at it from under a microscope. And the whole thing would be made of the same components. The same chemicals. 
Do you think a scientist like Tails would immediately know this already and have already analyzed the metal virus if I figured it out? But no, he's forced to have struggles with it because, duh, we want the Ark to last longer. And God forbid it simply take a long time to process analyzing it fully. Starline says that Eggman has no plan to control the metal virus. Even though you think he would want a plan to control it. So why would Eggman's biggest fan doubt him? I'm guessing he plans on having a shitty plan of his own that'll fuck up and lead to Silver's future. He wouldn't be saying this if Eggman had told him what his plan was going to be, which would be as easy as immediately telling him that he'll make a new metal virus. Starline says they're scheduled to test override signals tomorrow, but Eggman has overlooked or forgotten so many of his assets, apparently. You'd think he'd have anything he's not using recycled into his newer creation to save money on metal. He's smart. So Starline wonders if there's something he's used in the past that can help. I don't blame him for at least trying to help. The background reminds us of Lost World as Starline reads about the Deadly Six, who took control of his robots with their electromagnetic powers after Sonic liberated them. Sadly, I was already spoiled on the fact that they'd be brought back in this comic by someone who complained about it for no apparent reason considering that this is the perfect place for them to come back. Who better to control unruly robots than people who can control robots? If I wasn't spoiled on it, you probably would have seen a more excited and happy reaction from me like, Oh good, they're coming back. The only way this could backfire is that Sonic could kick away Eggman's conch again. Does it really matter if Starline does this though? How many robots can the Deadly Six control at once? Can't they only concentrate on controlling robots in a tiny part of the world at a time? Like, anything that they can see? And like, if they can't see a robot, they can't control it? They can control the robots in a place where Eggman happens to be when he wants to give out an order. But that's gonna be it. That's not comparable to the obedience from Society Emerald Boss Station, if they have to be there and can't prove all of the robots. Logically, you'd think Starlin would be told this after giving Eggman the idea. Of course he'd want to control a few robots around him. And that's all Eggman wants while he's busy getting rid of the heroes. But it's not a solution in the long term. So that's not really what he's looking for, is it? So why would he be excited? Or does he not care about most of the world and would be fine with just a small area being controlled? Sure, he's thinking about Electromages with magic. So maybe he's thinking that the logical thing of them having to see their target to control it doesn't apply at that point. Maybe he's assuming they could cast some general brainwashing spell to make all the Robians want to obey Eggman's orders. I don't know if the Deadly Six are powerful enough to cast it on millions at once. And again, without the conch, they have no reason to be loyal to Eggman. They just split off into separate factions. Also, if the Deadly Six get roboticized too, will they still be smart enough to use their electromagic? Even potentially to the point where they wouldn't be affected by the virus? Because the metal virus would make them only care about infecting. If all of them are roboticized, that'd be it. But maybe if one of them is encountered by a healthy Zeddy, they could be magically brainwashed out of it. Worlds Unite didn't portray the Zeddy's control of the robots as permanent. That's why if the Zeddy got knocked out, the robot masters and reploids end up freed from their control. If they could just cast a spell to make it permanent, they obviously would have done so. It is possible for the rules to be different in a different comic so they could be more powerful here. But we're not dealing with the good writer here. So he might be lazy and uncreative enough to just do the same thing again because that's how it was in the games. When I don't remember Lost World ever making it really clear if the Zeddy's control over the robots was meant to be permanent, or was something that would be undone if they passed out or died. It could go either way. Ideally, the Deadly Six would be the perfect way to immediately undo the completely unnecessary and confusing as shit plot twist that the Robians don't follow Eggman's orders anymore, which defeated the whole point of having an idea that was like robotization. What's the point if they're just acting like zombies, which are in tons of other series already? Meanwhile, I can't think of another series that has people get turned into robots obedient to the bad guy. I don't see a reason why they shouldn't undo that twist. It's clearly added nothing to the story. The Zombots wouldn't be able to catch up to Sonic either way. But since this writer does almost nothing but disappoint me, I'm going on the safe side and assuming the worst. That the Zeddy won't cast a spell to put all of the Robians under Eggman's control. This issue by Ian Flynn at least pleasantly surprised me by not roboticizing a character for a change. It was literally just about Sonic risking himself defending the truck of refugees from Shadow, Omega getting damaged, and them getting rescued by Silver and Tails. 
Sonic gets to run off the infection just in time as he almost gets himself killed being too stubborn to run away. Even though he should have felt that he was mostly covered in it. And he should know that he's more valuable than Omega. And Tails gives Sonic a mission to wear something that'll analyze the metal virus on him after he runs, as long as he gets to his lab. Do you think he would have done this already in all the time he was in his lab at the start of the arc? What was he doing there then? I don't know how the hell Tails can't fully analyze the metal virus because he didn't get enough fit from Sonic. It's so obvious that the writer is just forcing this to be the case because he wants the arc to last longer. It's not worth it if I haven't roboticized every expendable character yet. Also, Tails was too stupid to have given Sonic a pill or something to eliminate his need to sleep. The plot is pretty basic and kinda empty, actually. I'm glad Starline decided to recruit the Deadly Six because it's common sense to use Electromages to control robots. But how is he supposed to do that if Sonic kicked away the conch? Is the conch still functional? Does Eggman still have it? 